The one thing that could transform the way you train and make your progress much faster when it comes to handstands is not the new fancy pinning drill you've seen on social media. It could be the way you train, the how more so than the what. What's up everyone, this is Vincent Viz from the Handstand Academy and today I will share with you the four mistakes I see people make over and over again in how they train handstand. I'm sure that you're making at least one of them and at the end of the video, I will be sharing with you my ideal training routine that you can inspire yourself from to be more efficient in the way you train and progress faster towards your goals. Mistake number one, doing too many things with too little volume. Picture a complete newbie signing up to the global gym next to their house. They step into the gym and they see hundreds of different equipments and machines spread across the floor. And so they just try them all one after the other, not quite sure of how much they should do it, how many reps, how many sets, how much rest in between, what they are pursuing in the first place and how they should train accordingly. They come with no method at all and they get home with a sense of achievement because of course it's a bit sore here and there. So surely I did something right. You and I both know that it's not that simple. If you're trying to build muscle, you're going to train differently than if you're trying to build up endurance. And the same applies to many other movement practices. It's the same with handstands, however. It's very easy to just fluff around and waste your time because you don't have a plan in mind. There are dozens, hundreds, maybe thousands of different drills you can come up with out there. And if you don't know what you need, depending on where you are at on your journey, you will simply waste time trying them all, not giving enough time to some of them to actually yield their benefits while wasting your time and energy and effort on those that you should not care about in the first place. I like to think of your journey to your handsome goals as being a mountain that you are ascending. And depending on where you start on that journey, you will be located at different parts of that mountain. And the peak of our first mountain, I'm gonna call this in the Hanson Academy, the Freestanding Freedom Standard. That's the first mountain you're trying to climb. The Freestanding Freedom Standard equals to 15 seconds in the middle of the room, so no wall behind you, pretty much whenever you want, wherever you want. It is the knowing that you will need to really warm up and you don't need the stars to be aligned and your horoscope to tell you that you will be able to do it to be able to catch a handstand. It's in your bones. It's automated. You can rely on your ability to catch a handstand on demand. This is a very essential skill set to have because from that point onwards, you can conquer other skills, more complex skills, all the mountains, if you will, such as the press handstand, transitions, pike positions, dynamic leg movements, one arm handstands, and much more. In the last 10 years, I have worked with hundreds, if not thousands of people online and in person, helping them achieve their freestanding freedom standard. That's what my classes in Dublin and my Rocket online course are all about. And on our way from ground zero to the peak of this freestanding freedom standard mountain, we have a different base camp. Those base camps are your first second freestanding your five second freestanding and then the top of it to the 10th and the 15th second mark. You have to understand that the tools, the drills, the cues, the techniques you will need to bring your attention on are different from zero to one and yet again different from one to five and you will need yet another set between five and 15. This is where we look at the gym, at the hundreds of machines in front of us to go back to our analogy and we are able to curate the ones that we need because they will yield the most benefits to us given the point we find ourselves at. It is therefore important that you stop playing with stuff, although there is a moment for this in your practice, and you start pouring more energy into what matters most for you today. Mistake number two, not training frequently enough, which is not quite the same as not training enough. You have to think of your handstand as being more so a needy plant than a cactus. It doesn't need a lot of water at once, once a month. Rather, it needs a bit of water every single day. You need to care about it. You need to constantly 
expose yourself to the stimuli of handstands if you want that plant to grow. It doesn't need much water, it doesn't need two hours of your time per day to grow, but it needs frequent exposure. Many beginners and improvers make the mistake of training a very long session on the weekends when they have time and then they don't find the time in their busy schedules to do anything more. Your gains, your progress in handstands gets exponential if you expose yourself to it much more than once a week. You can just add 10 minutes of practice at the end of something you already do. They call this habit stacking. So if you're practicing yoga, ask your teacher if you can practice a few handstands at the end of your session. Just a few reps will already get you a long way. Mistake number three, confusing handstands with fitness. Handstands are a work of art, of quality. Meaning we don't go into a handstand practice with the intention of breaking a sweat. And many people who have a bit of a fitness background, they've been running, they've been practicing some form of martial arts, they've been doing yoga or fitness, they want to do too much too soon. They don't rest enough. The way I like to think of it is they treat each rep like a personal best. So every time they go against the wall or freestand or with a spotter, they try to achieve their max, their best performance, the one they finally achieved last week. This is not the way it works because if you do that, you will get tired very quickly, both physically and mentally. Instead, you want to make sure that most of your training session is not that hard, is within your mastery zone. While spicing things up and ensuring that you're growing, of course, within your practice, you have to ensure that you have enough headspace, enough mental bandwidth to, at the end of a set, assess what worked and what didn't. I call this a mindful practice. And to figure out what this is about, I want you to picture an archer shooting arrows at a target. There are two kinds of archers. The one that blindfully keeps shooting arrows until one hits the target. And of course, even if it happens after 1000 arrows, they will not know what made that work. They will not know what to do better for the next one to be just as successful. And then you have your Zen mindful archer who shoots one arrow sees where it lands and then reassess things, readjust their position, take into account how the wind affected the trajectory of the arrow and then shoot again. And by proximal improvements, they end up making it closer and closer to the bullseye. I want you to be that Zen archer when it comes to handstands. You want to do one rep and even if it doesn't feel fatiguing physically, know that mentally you have poured a lot of yourself into it come back down think about what you did well what you didn't do so good and what you could improve for the next rep by doing this doing less but better you will actually achieve more final mistake floating instead of practicing handstands there is a very very common misconception when we start handstands and that's to think that the only thing you have to really work on is the art of balancing however Instead of that, you want to think of your handstand as being a castle that sits upon eight pillars or foundations. And balance, what you're doing with your fingers to hold yourself upside down, is only one of those eight pillars. If all other pillars are flimsy and fragile, your castle will collapse. You need all eight of them to be super sturdy and just as strong. What most people do, however, is more balance at the wall. They kick up against the wall and they push their way off the wall, try to balance there and hope that by doing this more and more, they will be better at balancing. That doesn't solve the problem. That's the definition of insanity, doing more and more of the same, expecting different results. We need instead to look at the other seven pillars and ask yourself, where are my weaker spots? Those need more love. This is how we build sound foundation. Maybe your kick-up technique is not as good as it should be. Maybe your body keeps moving in space once you achieve the good alignment, preventing you from balancing any further. Maybe you are not quite sure about what alignment should be, where your legs and your pelvis and your shoulders should be in space, which makes your job very hard when it comes to balancing. Handstands are comprised of different pieces. Balance is just one piece of a much more complex puzzle that handstands are. 
So by now, I think that you have realized that you are at least making one mistake when it comes to the way you train. And hopefully you can change that from tomorrow onwards. What I'm going to leave you with is a template I would like you to inspire yourself from to design an ideal routine throughout your week. Now, of course, this template needs to be adapted. When I work with somebody online, throughout the weeks, we get to know each other and I get to know the following essential information. Where they are at on that mountain, obviously, what's their movement background, what's their injury history, how many times they can train per week, how much time they can dedicate to handstands per session, what kind of techniques and drills and cues resonates with them and what's the techniques and drills and cues that actually don't work with them so that we can carefully craft together a weekly program that they will follow and that will take them to the summit of that mountain as fast as possible. So I'm giving you this template, but you want to go through something just as nerdy to be able to adapt it to your needs. And of course, if you want my help in the process, you know where to find me in the description below. As we said just earlier, you want to water the needy plant that your handstand is. So try to carve out an hour, 45 minutes maybe, per week at least, to really take the time to dive into the intricacies of the drills you will have selected. This is the longest session in which you spend half of it doing things that feel pretty easy and the other half exploring drills that are at the edge of your mastery zone. At the end of this bigger session, you can also include some conditioning to become stronger and more endurant, which itself allows you tomorrow to work with quality longer. You will, in the process, identify a few drills that have more ROI, meaning they really feel good, they really seem to be moving the needle. You want to take note of those, and you also want to take note of the drills you don't quite like that are a bit obscure to you. This will be the core of your smaller sessions throughout the week. And so once you're done with this, as on Monday, on Tuesday, you just want to find 10 minutes to work on one of those two sets of drills, maybe at the end of your training. On Wednesday, you rest. On Thursday, we have another small session. On Friday, we rest. On Saturday, we have the bigger session. And on Sunday, we rest again. And just with that, doing two bigger sessions, one hour long, and two smaller sessions, we are doing plenty. We are making fast progress, much more so than if you had been working out four hours on a Saturday. Frequency beats sheer volume. If you want to share your own training routine, write them down below and I will tell you what I would tweak to improve that. And if you want more information about how I would go about designing a more efficient training program, check out this video.